Hello viewers, I went on Grand Turismo 7 recently and I found this. It's Autopolis and there's no question for me that it's the worst track in the game, undoubtedly. And to make things even worse, we're gonna have to do it in group two. And that means whipping out the Honda NSX concept. Now, for this first race, I'm gonna be starting at the back to demonstrate how hard it is to have a good race around here because the nature of this circuit lends itself to, well, it's being very difficult to overtake. Very, very difficult indeed, and especially in Group 2 cars. High downforce, it's very difficult to follow the car in front, uh, given the way that the uh, dirty air off the back of the front cars makes it really hard to drive quickly. And so it's quite a horrible combination of narrow track, lots of twisty corners, not many overtaking opportunities, and the cars do not help that situation uh, either. Now, there are a couple of cars being spun out here, as you can tell, and, and you might be wondering why is that happening? Let's take a look at um, Exhibit A, the orange car lagging about all over the place. And if Autopolis has one interesting feature, I suppose it's extraterrestrial activity because this orange car seems to be darting about in a very unhuman-like manner and surely that can only be technology from aliens. Um, but whatever is happening with that car, it is causing a lot of other people to crash, as you can see. This guy goes wide and I'm going to go up the inside and two more cars are going to crash there. And as a result of all of this, I have found myself gaining five positions on this lap. Make that six as... The, uh, the Dutch player there gets very much distracted. I mean, explain this, people. What is going on there? It is a one-bar red connection, which you just absolutely love to see. And it kind of goes against my entire point that it's difficult to overtake around here. Traditionally, it is. On this occasion, it was a bit easier. Now, as you can see here, we had a couple of laps fly by, and as we, uh, as we start lap number five... I didn't gain any positions, just gained a bit of time against uh, the car in front here. And the problem with Autopolis is very much quite a static feeling race. It's not a track where you can easily sail by and overtake six cars on one lap. I know I did do that on the first lap, right? But that was only because aliens were causing people to spin off. That's a bit different. But on a lap like this, lap five, the race has settled down by this point and everyone's found their rhythm, found their pace and this is where things become a lot more difficult. And so the only real way you can easily get by is to try an alternative strategy. So that's what we're going to do here, popping into the pit lane and swapping over from the medium onto the soft one lap earlier presumably than the Spaniard who was just in front and therefore we can go for the undercut it's a solid strategy in motorsport. If we can do it, great. Now, one big spanner in the works in the form of this Frenchman who just gets out in front. And this could scupper my chances of the undercut on the Spaniard. And therefore, I, I really want to lose minimal amount of time here against this player. Let's see if we can get past them as quickly as possible and um, lose the least amount of time. Uh, this kind of demonstrates how tricky it can be to follow and to overtake. This long left here leading onto the middle straight. Crucial corner because it leads into the hairpin, which is a f okay overtaking chance. Now here, I'm going to go for this move, right? Look for that second marker board on the brakes. Thankfully, space was afforded. The guy didn't really want to fight that one and left quite a lot of room, made it very easy for me. That isn't always the case. That is, um, that's about as easy as it gets. But usually in real, you know, proper racing circumstances, the other car would just block and you wouldn't be able to get through. It would be a lot more difficult than that. But thankfully, not much time lost. Let's see if we can get this move done against the Spaniard and uh, at least gain one position. As you can see, the Spaniard is in the pit lane. And so uh, it's going to be a classic case of undercut city let's see if it works onto the main straight halfway through the race then 
and let's uh, let's zoom forward and see some cars exiting the pit lane. There is the Spaniard, and we've got the momentum to go through, and there it is, textbook uh, 101 of the undercut performed to perfection and we gained one position so six positions we've gained really because of people crashing and making mistakes and one because of strategy and then we got that one legit overtake on someone who's on a different strategy but we haven't had any overtake against someone with equal strategy on equal terms uh, yet in this race so let's see if we can catch up with the Dutch player in front Try to move up a couple more positions if possible. And um, I noticed that uh, the tire wear was very, uh, very, very hard on this track. Um, lots of long corners does tend to kill your front tires. And that was definitely case in point with this race. So you did have to look after the tires. And the fact that I went in a lap early doesn't help. As you can see, I am, I am slowly gaining on this guy in front. But um, we get the fastest lap of the race there. But it is quite slow progress. This is lap 8 then. And as you can see, gained a little bit more. But there are two cars immediately in front of uh, the Dutch player here. And therefore, we've got a nice little battle going for 4th place. And I felt quite good at this point because I've got the fastest lap of the race. These two guys in front are fighting. So there's definitely a chance here of trying to secure another position and move up into the infamous sixth place. If we could do that, that would be great. Especially for 14th on the grid, around around this track, never easy. Uh, you know, tracks like Monza, something like that, something with lots of longer straights, a lot easier to overtake. But here, uh, for these long sequential corners, not easy to do at all. But let's see if we can do it. Uh, this, the Italian in P5 looks like they are somewhat off the pace, maybe just struggling with tyre grip. They might have done the alternative strategy. They could be on the medium tyres right now. And so we're just going to try and um, do our best, but it's just not easy. This is the thing about this track. I could go on for days about how how little regard I have for this track, how, uh, that I have for this place. Um, th well, the one thing I would say, if I may be positive for just five seconds is that it is a good challenge to drive the track quickly and given how hard it is to overtake it is a test of concentration if you're the car in front trying to keep a car behind you still have to drive the track and not make mistakes and that is the hard bit it is a hard track to get dead right um, on this occasion here at the beginning of lap 10 this is about as close as I ever got to a move and I just felt like I couldn't really go for that move. I wasn't quite close enough to really go for that and put it off cleanly. So I just had to wait and hope for a better opportunity. But unfortunately, I think that opportunity never really arose. As you can see, end of lap 10, and I was just just dropping off the pace. My tyres were beginning to go off by this point. Uh, they were screaming in pain. As you can see, the front left, I mean, both the front tyres are on the verge of death and uh, they they really have not got long left to live they are about to RIP in peace but I've got a quarter of a lap left to go just need to make it through to the end and just just deal with not being able to overtake it's such a frustrating race and it's just one of those tracks um, I spoke about the Alsace group 3 race which seemed to really lend itself to overtaking this, this is just the opposite. It just did not help in any way. Uh, it was a good test. We moved through from 14th to 7th in the end. And uh, we just wanted to look at this replay of the alien technology, as you can see here. Warming up the tyres in an incredibly peculiar way, which only humans can only one day aspire to reach that level of technology. And this is where things get very spooky. Look at this, just darting back and forward. And uh, it's very unpredictable behavior. And this this kind of created the chain reaction on lap one where people just couldn't quite judge what this car was doing. Darting about all over the place. And it is so off-putting when a car is doing this in front of you. And you have no idea. You can see there the Swiss player getting caught out ending up on the grass and 
that Swiss player was not the only one to end up with that fate. This was a this was a big lag a lag spike there. As um, reaching speed temporarily for 0.1 second of probably 500 miles an hour, this guy. Shame he was going in the wrong direction for a lot of it. So down the hill, this this is where um, I was able to gain three positions in one moment. This is the view from the car behind. And as you can see, the I mean that is off-putting, right? And he goes wide, and then another car crashes as well. And then I was able to overtake a car which went slightly wide in front. And uh, it was just an entertaining moment, but it was, it was quite funny how it took a very laggy alien to really open up and create overtaking opportunities around Autopolis. Now, I whipped on this beautiful Raybrig livery in time for some time trial. Now, of course, didn't want to be starting at the back too much and uh, therefore I had to jump into some time trial. And you know, this track is, it is a good challenge for time trial. There's no question about that. I think it is a very good, um, a good challenge to hook together an entire lap of Autopolis, especially in a Group 2 car. It's actually quite a fun lap to do. I just don't like racing it. I just think racing this track doesn't lend itself to the best of what motorsport has to offer. So my first two laps there, 34.8, 34.7, just trying to chip away a couple of tenths, and I wasn't consistent really. I would gain on a lot of the corners, then mess up somewhere else, and gain, you see that at the end there, three quarters of a tenth quicker, and then slightly quicker again. So the time was coming down. I was slightly under a tenth quicker every lap until I made this mistake. And obviously that is not going to help. That is not going to mean I'm quicker. So that lap was a bit off. But then it got back to a 34.5. But I knew I could get into the 33s if I hooked together the entire lap. And this was my lap. And the first corner is really difficult because it is slightly blind. But it's really this circuit about truly maximizing the track width because it isn't that wide and then just getting rotation out of anywhere. It's really difficult in these Route 2 cars because they are quite clumsy at low speed. Uh, they really do work very well at high speed with the downforce. When you get into these slow hairpins, it does feel a little bit cumbersome at times. And if you can generate any extra rotation, getting the car to turn a little bit quicker, that can be so crucial to your lap time. So coming up the hill, towards the hairpin, we are one and a half tenths up on our on our previous best, which is not too bad. Nearly two tenths as we hit the brakes into the hairpin. Try not to go wide this time. And we've got a much better exit that time around. Two tenths advantage. This corner is a very fearsome turn. Have to really commit and be brave. And again, onto the curb on the exit. Really running the risk of going onto the grass, but you have to really do that if you want to maximize your lap time. Little bit wide there. And I would say I'll lose maybe two tenths by doing that maybe yeah maybe even more than that that was really annoying because i was very much up on this lap i still am four tenths up actually but it could have been slightly better through the final turn let's see what's going to be as we head to the line not quite a 33 but a 34 one definitely could have been a 33 9 perhaps without those mistakes inside the top 200 in the world which wasn't too bad but you see here not quite within the ranks of those well into the 33s. Anyway, that lap time put me fourth on the grid. This one. So let's see what we can do from a front start, front-ish start. And it's, it's going to be a lot harder from here because everyone's a lot more even on pace. When you're starting last and your pace is maybe top five sort of pace, then you're going to hopefully be able to make it past the guys at the back of the pack. But here... You're matched up against the people who are roughly even on pace with you. It's going to be even harder to really get a move done. And I think a lot of the time it comes down to sticking as close as you can, maybe maintaining your tyres, going for the undercut, hoping for a mistake. And um, really, you're not going to realistically gain five, six, seven positions in a race. Uh, you, I mean, I, you, you can't from fourth because there's only three positions to gain. But you get my point. Hopefully. Now, keeping the pressure on. A little bit wide here. Going to go for the exit speed. And this is where the Germans race is about to unravel. Pulling away from the guy behind. 
Now, I spoke about this corner, very difficult, and it's going to prove to be the case. As the German drifts wide, and I'm able to take advantage and move up into third. And it kind of just shows you, in this whole video, I've not really done an overtake. Apart from maybe on the French back markers, I almost go wide there. I've not really made a genuine, legit overtake into a corner against someone who's level on pace with me. It's always against someone who's on a different strategy who's a bit slower, or someone who's crashing. And so it kind of just shows you how difficult it is to really get a proper overtake done here. End of lap six, going from the medium onto the soft. You see the two guys at the front were already on the soft, and so they'll be on the medium. So this is a chance, perhaps, to get a move done, because we have a tyre advantage. As we're now on the soft, the guys in front on the medium we should be gaining on them and hopefully by the time we get to them we'll have we'll have that advantage and we might be able to spring an overtake against someone of equal calibre let's see if we can do it now it took a couple of laps for me to gain and the unfortunate thing here really of this circuit and and these cars and the way that the game is designed is that once you start getting close Let's say we're, we're within a second now of this car in front. This is where the dirty air effect comes in. I begin to lose grip on the front end of the car. And I just wasn't really able to get any closer than that. It was, it was a, a very frustrating experience. And in fact, it really turned more of an offensive race to a defensive race. As uh, the British driver behind, as you can see, very close indeed. And so I couldn't really rest all the way through to the end. And... Just like the first race, tyres beginning to die of death by this point. And so I just had to nurse them and bring them through to the end. So it was, yeah, once again, a static race. It was a tough challenge, as I say. Autopolis always proves to be one of those races where you have to really have high levels of concentration to not make a mistake and not um, surrender an easy position to your opposition. But at the end of the race, uh, the Brit behind give me a good battle right of the way to the finish line. And it's going to be a podium. But thankfully, that is the end of Autopolis. We can say goodbye to it, hopefully for eternity. But who knows, they might bring it back very soon. But that is the end of this one. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Have an amazing day. I shall catch you next time. Goodbye.